Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Morgan's Pop Talks, bringing down the latest in reality TV and pop culture. Have an amazing show for you today. We have Laura from Love is Blind is here to spill the tea. We have a MPT State of the Union, a family meeting, an emergency press conference that we're going to get to at the end. So make sure you stick around because I have a very important update to share with you about the future of MPT. The Scar is, I was going to say scarring, but it's healing, which is what we love to see. Been able to take the Band-Aid off slowly, but surely still a little bit of a scar there. Um, I have been scared. This is the first day that I put on makeup in a week and a half, and now I'm just staring at my scar on the computer screen. You know what? It's coming along, and we are going to be back to normal before you know it. I've been afraid to put makeup on. I shouldn't even be talking about this because I know as soon as I say something, I'm going to get probably like, mm, I want to say seven or eight DMs being like, you shouldn't put makeup on yet. Don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. I've been through enough. Let me wear a little bit of glow filter and it'll be okay. I'm going to wash it off as soon as I'm done here, I promise, and put some Neosporin on this bad boy. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into the pop three um, because like I said, I'm going to do the top of the show rant at the bottom of the show today because it needs a little bit more time. So three biggest headlines in reality TV and pop culture. Can you guess what number one is? Can you guess? Princess Catherine, Kate Middleton spotted maybe? Another twist to the story here with Princess Catherine after the Photoshop debacle. Now we see, allegedly, Kate and William spotted out at Windsor Farm Shop, just looking looking alive with some pep in the step. And you know, at first, I, I just had this huge sigh of relief. I was like, oh, gosh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He heard our T's and P's when it came to Kate Middleton. Because I need, I need to be able to put this to bed. Truly, I do. I'll talk more about that in a second. But at first, I was convinced. I was like, oh, gosh, she's good. I'm naive. I tend to believe everything that I see. So I was like, yes, we can move on. Now y'all have me considering that it might not have been Kate Middleton. I mean, my comment section was flooded. That's not Kate. That's not Kate. That's not Kate. Got on my TikTok. There was a different conspiracy theory every single video you know, some of the things that they were saying on the conspiracy theory side of TikTok um, about the height difference, people were comparing the height difference between Farm Shop Kate and Royal Kate. You know, we don't know if they're the same person or if they're different people, but William's a lot taller than Kate and, you know, the jaw looked different. I don't, it, there's so much, there's so much. Here's the thing. I still, in my heart of hearts, I'm going to believe that it's Kate because I want to, you know? Like, I don't know. I'm just trusting in God that that's Kate Middleton, just to put me at a little bit of peace of mind. But here's the thing. We got the car photo. How many weeks ago? At the beginning of March. She was in the car. She was with the sunglasses on. When I sat down and really thought about it, that car photo looks nothing like farm shop Kate. And there's no way around it. You know, I think... It's really easy to sit there and like analyze her face shape and her hair and her height and all these things. I what I was doing that too. I'm not going to blame you for it. It's human curiosity. I was like, oh, well, she does look thinner. She had a surgery though. You know, people tend to lose weight after they have a surgery. But it's like the car photo compared to the farm shop photo is very different. And also, like, why does every photo look like it's been taken on a potato? Blurry as can be, it looks like every time that my mother tries to take a photo of me and my now husband where she like cuts half of my leg off, it's always blurry. She always needs to wipe the camera lens. That's what we get on like four separate occasions. So look, I don't know. The latest is that the London Clinic recently launched an investigation um, because her hospital records were reportedly... Um, someone tried to break into her hospital records, her private medical records, which is just so beyond. It's beyond. It's cuckoo. It's Looney Tunes. We can't be doing that. I mean, not. I know we can't be doing that because we're not in London. Maybe some of you are. But uh, per the Daily Mail, an investigation came to light after one staff member attempted to access Kate's notes on file without permission. Um, here's where I'm at now, and I feel like a lot of us are here. Um, 
it's okay when it comes from a state of concern and human curiosity, like I said, but also you don't, you don't want history to repeat itself. You really don't. I mean, you don't want Princess Catherine to be hunted for a lack of better word. I mean, I think we're all at this point getting flashbacks to Princess Diana. I think the way that the palace handles situations in general, not just this one, but a lot are pretty archaic. So it's not doing them any favors. Um, for now, let's just hold our breath until Easter and see where that road leads. Let's move on to this rumor about Olivia and Rod being out at Southern Charm. So this was not confirmed, but I did see a couple places this popped up this past week that it's rumored that Olivia Flowers and Rod Razavi are out for next season of Southern Charm. Not too many people are surprised about Rob or Rod, excuse me, but Olivia is surprising considering how much she was a part of the main storyline last season in her love triangle with Austin herself and Taylor and Green. Um, one, I think she spends a lot of time in Dallas. I don't know if she actually lives there, uh, but that could be an argument Two, She just went through a traumatic experience with her family and maybe just needs some time off from public life and pressure. Um, but you know, I have a conspiracy theory because obviously, obviously my conspiracy theory if it's true that Olivia was not asked back to Southern Charm, um, she's getting the Andrea Denver treatment. I think these shows have their main cast set, right? And then the other cast members are kind of a little bit of a rotating door around them. They want to create the storylines that follow the main cast members. So with Andrea, when he was into Paige, when that ended, he was out. Olivia was introduced to us by being a love interest to Austin Kroll. And now that it's over and they've both moved on, the show needs to find its next storyline that follows Austin. On the flip side, what makes a newbie stick? You know, because you have a Sierra or a Taylor, you know, what makes them come back when someone like Olivia not come back? I think flexibility. You know, when you think back, Sierra has been able to have different love interests on the show. I think Taylor, you know, still has some lingering things with Shep, but also a new boyfriend, which will be interesting to see how that affects Shep. So that's just my casting conspiracy theory. Uh, number three in this week's pop three, Larsa and Marcus have split again for a second time, just one month after getting back together. They have unfollowed each other once more in today's day and age. That is such a statement, especially because they have a mute button, but they're like, I want you to know that I don't want to see you. I want you to know that I don't care about what you're posting on your Instagram stories. I don't care about your workout classes. I don't care what music you're listening to in the car. I don't want to see it. So one source told page six that Larsa really just wants to focus on herself. The relationship felt all consuming, which is interesting because who was the one that was all consuming? I'm sorry. I did not see Marcus throwing a welcome home party for Larsa after being away for five days. So who's all consuming? I don't know. Um, what a roller coaster. I mean, they broke up. They got back together. She was seen with a huge ring on her finger. We got the Traders reunion where they're like, yeah, we had a fight. We needed to spend some time apart. And now we're back. I mean, what are we going to do without their podcast? These are life's unanswered questions that I need answers to. All right, ready for the deep dive. This week we have a special guest. Now that Love is Blind, we are able to put a bow on it. We saw the finale. We saw the reunion. Laura is here to talk about her time on the pods. I called 1-800-DRAGMAN and Laura picked up. So MPT fans, please welcome Laura from Love is Blind. How have the last couple of months been for you? Girl, the last couple of months have aged me at least five years. I swear. Um, it's been a whirlwind. <laughs> um, I think I was a little naive, a lot naive going into it, just thinking, oh, this is such a long time ago. Everything's going to play out exactly as, as it happened. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I had no interest in being on TV. I absolutely hated it, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, it's been crazy. It's been fun. Um, it's just been a whirlwind for sure. How has it been to sit on all of this for a year? You know, like you said, you thought it was going to play out one way. What are some of the inconsistencies that you're like, man, what? I guess it's just, and I we knew going into it or I knew going into it that there was going to be thousands and thousands and thousands of hours. I mean, I think I filmed for like 
30 some days. So there's, there's conversations with the girls. There's so many pod dates. There's so many dates on vacation. There's so many dates in real life. There's so many real life Mm. conversations, important parts of my personality, important parts of mine and Jeremy's relationship that just couldn't be shown. I don't think anything was done intentionally, but it's just, they got to boil us down to a few hours to fit it in 12, 13 episodes, whatever it is. And I just didn't expect for my whole relationship to be boiled down to the love triangle. I knew it was going to be a part of it, but for that to be the whole dang thing, I was like, okay, here we go. Like right where my story starts is when he called me Sarah Ann, which was really like day six in the pod. So there was a lot else that had happened by then. You know, we had a full blown like relationship and, you know, connection with each other by then. So yeah. 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 I mean, one of the downfalls of reality (laughs) TV for sure. I feel like, you know, you, I mean, I have no experience, so how would I know? But you do go in (laughs) thinking like, you go in thinking, okay, I know what happened to me. I know what my relationship looks like. I know what's going to happen. And then you kind of get thrown the curveball. So how have you navigated that? Um, I guess just taking it day by day. I think I'm, I feel like I'm kind of on the other side. Um, It was a journey, you know, I feel like there was some character development to where it's like, okay, we, we made, they're showing one part of Laura and then it's like, okay, now we get to like see more of her personality. I wish more of my true personality would have been shown and it wouldn't have been so kind of one layered. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just kind of adjusting to, you know, everybody's public opinion of you. Like I've, I hadn't really cared or thought about that much before. Um, But the feedback has been amazing honestly thus far like the whole women empowerment movement like i'm so excited that um a large portion of the proceeds of my merch is going to go to we're working with several um like women's charities and so i just feel like the stories that i get from women that are saying like oh you've empowered me you've inspired me you've i wish i could handle myself in situations like that um i feel like that's a really good aspect that's come out of it So we won't spend the whole time on the love triangle. We have some things to discuss before (laughs) that happened. Um, One of the more viral moments was um, you consoling one of your good friends, Jessica. So, you know, she was also in a little bit of a love triangle. And there was this viral scene of you going up to her and, and saying, that's not your man. That's not your man. This scene... There's been some pushback from this, you know, people saying, yeah. Laura, yeah. you were doing your girl dirty. What is not, not, I know what you meant by it. Obviously you're coming from a great place, but also you're planting a seed of doubt. This is what people are saying, planting a seed of doubt right. um, without giving any context. So what's your response to that? And I, and I get it. I'm so happy you brought that up. I've been foaming at the mouth to talk. I've talked about it once or twice, but I've just been foaming at the mouth to talk about it on a larger scale because There's so much context that isn't shown. So that day in specific, and it's funny because Jess Jess and Chelsea and I talk about this all the time. We're like, damn, how could that situation have gotten so misconstrued? So the Mm -hmm. situation was Chelsea was my very close friend, was then, she is now. Jess is my very close friend, was then, is now as well. That was a weird day. You know, that was the day where Jess spent, had a four and a half hour date with Jimmy that they had left early, like two hours in. So for the other two hours, she was in the lounge with me. I think it was just the two of us. Maybe one other person was there. And we're we're chatting. We're going through things. You have nothing to do but sit there and chat and dissect every aspect of everything. And she, you know, she has a daughter at home that she every single day she missed and was, you know, reassuring herself that she was there for the right reasons. But she wanted to be home with her daughter if there was any inclination that her husband wasn't there. So we went around for hours you know, before the other girls came back into the lounge and we were talking through it. And she's like, no, you know, he's going to come in tomorrow morning and he's going to tell me he loves me and he's going to come correct this. And we're going to get proposed. Like we're going to get engaged and we're going to run off into the distance. And I mean, I was like, absolutely. He surely is going to come to his senses. But, you know, she was clear that she's like, if I have to spend another night away from my daughter to have this guy come play my face tomorrow morning or the next day or whatever it's going to be. She's like, I'm never going to forgive myself. I would feel so terrible. You know, she did. She didn't want to cry on camera, which I totally get. None of us did. She also didn't want like him to get the jump on her. And, you know, so Jess is smarter than that. Um, 
And so that's why I was I was so conflicted when we fast forward again hours later, Chelsea comes in, she confides in me. Chelsea's so sweet. She wasn't about to come in there and scream from the rooftops and be like, I'm in love. Like, you yeah, screw you, Jess. She would never do that. She's so respectful. So she was going to kind of silently sit with this information that she was in love and probably going to get engaged. Meanwhile, I had my friend Jess over here who's thinking this man's going to come correct tomorrow morning and is going to propose to me and tell me he loves me and choose me. And she's going to come, right. you know, all excited and she's going to have her heart broken and she's going to have, you know, he's going to play her. And I was like, how can I give Chelsea the space to celebrate her love? Cause that's what it was all about. That's what we were all in it for. But how can I also give Jess the heads up that she is going to be heartbroken? So right. hindsight being 2020, I was trying to protect both people at the same time. I don't know if it came across that way. Both of the women knew my heart. So yeah, <laughs> it didn't look the best. I'll fully yeah, agree to that. No, I mean, it's mu- it's so easy to to sit at home too <laughs> on your couch and be like, that's the wrong way to handle it. But you don't know how you would yeah. act when you're in this type of experiment yeah. with your friends too. Um, so yeah. another moment that had that kind of reaction was the bean dip. Will you ever use that phrase ever again? <laughs> Never again. I've never used it since. I'll never use it ever again. I mean, <laughs> bean dip was so lighthearted, Morgan. Like, so lighthearted. We were bean dipping each other. Like, you spend like 16 hours a day with these girls. It turned into a sorority house. We we're sneaking up on each other. We had like a bean dip assembly line at one point outside the pod doors. Like, it was just a funny, lighthearted thing. And I should have never repeated it. I have no idea why Jeremy repeated it the way that he did to. Anyways, yeah. Be at bean dip, RIP. No more bean dip. Yeah. <laughs> RIP. And we're leaving it there and we're not going to talk about it ever again. <laughs> so another moment is Sarah Ann saying, I'll have my moment. You know, that's kind of been something that people have looked back on and wondered. I mean, if there was anything behind that or if she just said it. What do you make of it now? Looking back and knowing everything that you know, what was your thought when she said it then? And what is your thought about it now? That's a really good question. I have thought a lot about this, you know, as things are bubbling up a year later and I'm seeing things and, you know, in a different lens. I am not sure. I didn't know then when her and I were, after he broke up with her and she came to the lounge and we said our goodbyes, I took that as, I was so grateful for that moment because I hadn't been vocal with a lot of the women about who I was dating, especially her, because I, it could be hurtful to hear that the other girls were forming connections with, you know, your person. And so it was hurtful for me to hear her running around the lounge talking about it, but I just chose to keep that to myself. Um, So I was grateful for that moment. I was grateful that, you know, I was kind of able to apologize for not letting her know that I was dating him. I was grateful that I was, you know, able to wish her well. But the whole thing was confusing because I spoke a little bit about this during the reunion, but I'm not, I don't think it was shown, but like she was into several other people in the lounge. Like she was really into them, like, or in the pods. And so, you know, it was kind of confusing to believe that she was that upset about Jeremy because she, you know, literally jumped on vacation with another person from the show immediately. And, you know, we were like, oh, well, that's the guy that you liked anyway. So it, it just makes it just makes sense. But I don't know if there was malice behind it. I don't know if she was being vindictive. I I, I might have just aligned with the storyline. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I've thought about that several times as well. If anything, it is an eerie foreshadow of what was to come. And now that I know, um, I think they showed at the reunion, but Sarah Ann and I had a moment where we were able to talk at the lake day. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, she flat out told me he left the door open. He didn't break things off with me. He left it very much like it's not the end of us, which obviously I had no idea about. Um, He had told me, you know, it was not her. It was never going to be her. She was never an option. He said several times on and off camera, if I had said no to him, he was never going to propose to her. Like he dated her because he kind of had to. So um, I don't know, maybe because she was live in that conversation and the breakup with him where he did kind of keep it open. Maybe that's why she's like, I'll have my moment. I don't know. Looking back, do you think that he 
straight up lied about not being into Sarah Ann? Or do you think that he believed that he wouldn't be into her until she Uh reached out with the DM? Great question. I truly don't. I truly don't know. He reassured me so many times that she was not it, that he had a good time with her, but she was not a serious candidate partner for him. Um, he met my friends. They asked him the same question. He was like, no, she, I would not pick her. If it was, if it wasn't Laura, it wasn't anybody. So I don't know. I mean, I, there was inconsistencies or things that had happened in Jeremy's and I relationship to where, yeah, I was starting like the red flags were showing and I was starting to pull back a little bit. I was still planning to get married. I was 100% or at least 85%. <laughs> it was kind of the joke that him and I had, you know, going to the altar and saying yes. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what happened that night. I There was several, there was a lot of time that happened between the DM and him staying out with her. So I don't know. I don't know what happened. It must have been that good at 5 a.m., whatever went down for him to, to shift. But what's confusing is after I have texts from him that's like, I love you, I'll do anything I'll fight for you after he stayed out with her, but then he shifted the next day and said, never mind, I'm not staying in limbo. And then the lake day happened. So it's all confusing. Let's talk about the time yeah. between the DM and you guys ending your relationship. Were there other red flags besides that big moment? Because obviously, even I think receiving the DM and hearting it, I was like, no. We're not doing that. That's one red flag, right? But was there (laughs) any other like day-to-day situations that you were like, Sarah Ann aside, this would not have worked? Yeah, there was, there was inconsistencies, I could say. Like the, the persona that I had of him or the things that he said about himself as a person in the pods like if that person existed in real life, we would have been married. We would have been happily married for almost a year now. But there was inconsistencies with how he portrayed himself in the pods versus what he did in real life. There was just some weird things that didn't add up. There was a ton of stories that were told in the pods. And then to like my family and friends, the same story would be told, but like it would be different. So I'm like, what is it? Like, what is what is going on here? Um, there was also a huge... I don't want to say immaturity at all. I don't think he's necessarily immature, but there was just like this very goofy, very like childlike personality that I saw a bunch of all the time that I didn't see at all in the pods. And so that was kind of red flag to where I was like, do you know when to be serious? I really didn't have a huge issue with the Hawaiian shirts. It was <laughs> it was it's wearing okay them at inappropriate times to get a rise out. It. <laughs> it was... It was just bizarre to me. It was like he was wearing <laughs> blue light glasses, not around TV screens or TV or cell phone. It was just like, what? Like, what is it? You tell me a perfect vision, but then you're wearing like fake glasses. It's like you wear Hawaiian shirts, not because they make you feel good. You're wearing them to like annoy people and get a rise and wear them at inappropriate times. There was also like some financial yeah. things that I had questions about, um, which got cut out as well. So there, yeah, there was some things where I'm like, I was just like, I was trying to wrap my head around this new version of him that I was meeting because it wasn't what was him in real life and what I, the picture, in my opinion, of what he painted himself in the pods were two different people. So I was trying to figure it out. I was trying to merge the two. Can you divulge (laughs) some of the financial talks that you guys had? Because I feel like those situations in general with every couple really got skipped over this season. And it's such a big part of a potential marriage, especially in a situation like this. Yeah. 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 I mean, I guess one big conversation that we had had, um, it was, I guess not so much financial, but it was like health issue and financial related. So he had overstimulated himself like multiple years before by taking too much caffeine or pre-workout or something and like ultimately given himself a heart attack and had gotten in a bunch of debt because of it and was figuring all this out. And it, it was just very bizarre to me that something self like self-inflicted like that. And then I don't know, I don't really know. We didn't get far enough to really kind of look into his finances, but it just seemed things didn't add up. It's like, if you own all these businesses and you made all this money off of them and you're this entrepreneur, but you have this debt it was like, I've worked very hard to pay off my debt and be where I am. And so it was things, again, things just weren't adding up. 
let's talk about the fiance story because we really we didn't get a whole lot. I feel like everything that we learned about the fiance we saw on social media and I see that look. So the floor is yours. How much did he divulge about his previous relationship? And were there any surprises that that came after not from Jeremy when it comes to the fiance situation? The fiance situation, um, I am like hesitant to even touch because there's so many layers to that story. I think I mentioned it in the reunion. He had told me that he was previously engaged. I honestly liked that he had gotten to a point in another relationship to where he could make that level of commitment. To me, it was a green flag at the time. Um, He absolutely did not mention that it was a few weeks before he went on the show. The timelines of things were drastically different. That's where I'm that's where I was saying earlier the stories would be similar but not exactly match up. There was one story with his ex-fiance um where I remember him saying that he'd let her keep the ring um which I just thought was kind of admirable and um and then I remember hearing another story he was either telling to like my friends or family or somebody to where when they ended things like he found out because she'd left the ring on the kitchen table and like packed her bags in the middle of the night or something. And I'm like, that's such a Mm. bizarre thing to, so I'm not sure what happened with the ex fiance. I feel for her. Um, Again, there was inconsistencies on my end in my relationship with him. So I'm sure there was some confusion and inconsistencies with her as well. Yeah. Okay, let's get to the big lie, the big moment. I mean, <laughs> I this honestly to me was like the moment of the season because it's like how often as a woman have you been in this relationship and you know your partner is doing something shady and you just erupt because you can't. You know, you're you're feeling so many things on the inside. You I I just don't know how you kept your cool (laughs) and how you laid the trap. Were you raging on the inside? Did it take self-control? Like, take me through your thought process. Morgan, this is the important piece. This is not my first rodeo, specifically (laughs) with, with this situation. But I feel like a big part of this that was cut out and I was so extra, extra clear with Jeremy in the pods and afterwards is that I have been put through the ringer in my relationships. Like I have been lied to, screwed over, manipulated, gaslit in any way possible, financially, cheating wise, um, drug addiction wise. Like I have been through it all. So my thing is like, I smell your bullshit. I'm going to let you step in it. Like I will give you the space to tell the truth. I understand people can get caught up in emotions and uh, I don't know what to say and this is going to look bad. I get that. I've been there. That's fine. But it's like, I will give them the space to be truthful. And then after that, there there's no remorse from, from my end at all. I have no idea why I woke up at 5 a.m. I truly do not typically wake up that early. I'm not the earliest riser. and But I had gone to bed super early the night before it's so exhausting filming. I had the best day with my family the day before, and I thought he did too. My family, I thought they also had fun. But, you know, you end late. I ended up going to bed at like 9 o'clock. He went to go get a massage at 9 p.m. He, I was asleep when he came back around 1030. Um, anyways, I woke up at 5, I guess, because I went to bed so early. And I was like, woman's intuition, I guess. You know, and I was yeah, like, why 100%. the hell else would he be a why would he be up there? That wasn't any of the places he said he was going to be. I don't even know of any bars that are up there. It's kind of a up and coming part of town. Like, and then I was like, Oh, it's a weird part of town. And I remember one person in the lounge saying that they live there. So I, I waited up and I watched the car until I saw his car get back on the highway. And then I went over to get bed and I said, I'll deal with, I'll deal with, I'll handle business tomorrow. And um, yeah, the morning didn't start off the best, you know, cam- the camera crew was coming regardless. His mother was there. We were gonna film with her. I was honestly so excited to finally meet. I'd met no one from his side. I hadn't met his friends. I hadn't met his family yet. I was so excited. And yeah, when he came in the next morning after sleeping on the sofa, um, and not even coming back up to the bedroom, cause I'm sure he was going to lie about what time it was. He was stumbling over his words To say I was calm, I wasn't. I ended up leaving because for me, I'm not going to sit there screaming back and forth is not productive. So I left. I grabbed the coffee. 
grabbed my senses, got myself together a little bit. And um, yeah, he still wouldn't answer the question off camera before the camera crew started of where he was at 5 a.m. So he's kind of going around saying, oh, we had to do that twice. We had to do it twice. We didn't do it twice. You wouldn't answer the question before the camera started. You barely answered the questions once the camera started. So um, yeah, it was a hell of a, I kind of blacked out during the whole thing, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thankfully for you, it's on a television show that is seen around the world. So if you ever forget, yeah. you can go back and watch it. <laughs> it felt like I was watching it for the first time. I was literally like this. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it was perfect. It, honestly, like I said, it was just a lesson on how to catch somebody in a lie. I was taking notes. I mean, hopefully I'll I've never had, have like to I catch said. my husband in a lie, but it was so good. No, I'm proud no, of your husband's a gem. There's no way he would ever, he would ever sketchily share his location or lie about where he was. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> so the lake party, we saw this, um, I mean, I guess you can call it a, an extra scene at the reunion, this conversation that you sat down and had with Sarah Ann. What I need to know is, was she riding a jet ski with Jeremy before that conversation or after that conversation? That is a really good question, and I'm not sure I remember. Um, no, they were – so the scene where I'm crying at the end, I tried so hard to kind of keep it in. And I have this tough exterior, which I do, and that's the real me. But, like, at the end of the day, it was my real relationship. It was – we had just broken up days prior – um, again, like I keep harping on like having to, you know, have my 96 year old grandmother who lives in California cancel her plane ticket to my wedding. Cause like it was devastating all the way around. And yeah, I remember crying on the beach and looking over and seeing them on the jet skis. And I remember, I remember like talking to the, like, like shaking my head at the camera crew and the producers. Cause I was like, this is so messed up. Like this is diabolical. Yeah. And I think that's where I was like, how, like I'm, I'm irrelevant. It's like I never existed. Like you were telling me you love me and you'd do anything for me three days earlier. And now I'm sitting here crying mm -hmm. on the side of the beach while you're having this date day with them. So it was definitely after the conversation that she had with me. Because it's one thing to, you know, for another woman to come up and be apologetic and explain your side. And I feel like you did a fair job of hearing her out. But then to turn around and, and like rub it in everybody's faces, it just to me, it's like that's the moment that felt disingenuous to me. It's like you you can't sit there and say, yeah. uh, I care about you, Laura, and I care about how you feel in woman to woman. I don't want to hurt you. And then five seconds later, you're laughing it up on a jet ski. It's like there are cameras. You're not going to you're not going to be able to like manipulate your way out of that situation. So <laughs> I can't imagine how it felt for you. Yeah, yeah it was. Um yeah, I mean, it was super hurtful. It was it was disrespectful. I've said this, you know, I feel like since day one that Sarah Ann's a player, of course, in all of this. But it's like my relationship was with Jeremy, not with her. The way I think mm -hmm. she handled it was obviously <laughs> it was an ill taste. But um, yeah, I don't know why they did the things they did. It yeah, it was terribly hurtful at the time. I mean, it was a long time ago now, and watching it back, I just didn't realize how shitty it was like I obviously hadn't heard their conversation on the dock but when she came and apologized I think I mentioned this at the reunion it didn't feel like an apology it felt like she was asking me for advice it felt like she was coming to brag and say oh well he just told me that I was always his first pick and I was like well right. I'm the one that has the ring so I don't understand how you could believe that and again there was just all these other things. So I was kind of just warning her. It didn't seem like she was truly like, I apologize. I feel bad. So I'm not surprised she went and hopped on the jet skis. You know, I think she was just trying to say, whoops, it was me all along. You were just kind of in her way is kind of how I took it. I know that all of that is obviously difficult. It's painful. It's not the way you wanted this to work out. But I think on the flip side of things, if you're looking at the positives, the relationships that you have with the other women, I think, is so awesome to see how good of friends you guys are, to see how you guys have all been there for each other. Can you talk about what the women mean to you? Uh, the women mean everything to me. I mean, I was literally just <laughs> crying to one of them the other day about this. We uh, – this situation was crazy. It was tough. 
the internet is is rough. Um, getting engaged and breaking it off, getting cheated on, all of that is rough. But it's if we hadn't had each other through all of this, I really don't know how any of us would have made it through. I mean, the amount of times, <laughs> almost on a daily basis, one of us is calling the other crying. And it's like, you can't even hear what the person is saying because <laughs> something's happened. Um, I mean, we are, we are thick as thieves. Like we seriously are. Um, I love those girls so much. They are the greatest gift from all of this. I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. people ask me like, oh, do you regret it? It's like the only reason I don't regret it is because I have these women now in my life and they'll be in my life forever. So they're the best. Yes. And we know that you are <laughs> dating now. You have a new man. I know we're keeping it on the down low, but what does he think of all of this? Oh my God. He's literally the cutest. He is, he doesn't watch reality TV. Um, I told him, I guess I told him pretty early on. We've been keeping things, you know, casual for a while, um, or at least last year. And I remember telling him about it. And he was like, like the Survivor, like the show Survivor. <laughs> like, like, it kind of felt like that. He's like, did you win? Yeah. He's like, did you win money? And I was like, no, like it's not anything like that. I'm like, you win a wedding and hopefully a lifelong partner. Like, um, so he was he's he's pretty far removed. He's not big on social media. Um, yeah, I mean, he's great. He, he, in the beginning thought it was funny. Now he, the past couple weeks, couple months, he realizes how serious it is. He had no idea how many people watch the show. He really kind of thought nobody was going to give a shit about it. Um, no, but he's been super supportive. He's so sweet and he doesn't care if I plaster his name on the local billboard, but I'm just trying to be respectful I know how the internet can be. Um, yeah. You know, there are a bunch of detectives out there. And, you know, just like I'm a real person with a real life and a real job, he's a real person with a real life and a real job. So just trying to be respectful, but he's amazing. He's been super supportive. How long have you been together? We, okay. So I'll be honest with you, girl to girl, the show fed me up. Like, <laughs> I called my wedding off in May. And we were supposed to get married May 13th. I think I called it off like the first week in May. Um, I had no interest in dating anybody. My guards were completely up again. Sure. You know, I mentioned that I had been screwed over a bunch. I was like, I cannot believe I've let this happen again. I believe someone was who they said they were again, just because they were on the other side of the wall this time. Um, so I had my guard up, but we were friends of friends, like distant kind of extended group. Um, I guess it was the end of the summer last year. I kind of refused to um, make it a real relationship until kind of the end of the year or the beginning of this year. So we're taking things slow. I needed some time That's to, okay. act, yeah. you know, believe he was who he said he was, which so far so good. Yeah. And I mean, what is the rush? Like you said, you know, take things slow, really yeah. find out who this person is. It, it's much better to take things slow than to rush it and to find out that, this person's a con artist, like some of the past people that we've been talking about today. But okay, well, Laura, thank you so much. I'm so happy that you are in such a better place. And like I said, I loved watching you on the show. Tell the MPT listeners where they can buy your merch, where they can find yes. links, all the good things, anything else you're doing. Yes, yes, yes. You can find our crop tees, our mugs, our totes, and crew neck and regular tees coming soon on shopkickrocks.com. We are partnering partnering with um, a ton of women empowerment charities, which I'll be announcing very soon. I'm so excited. So a big portion of the proceeds will be going to charity. Um, yeah, that's all. I'm all about women empowerment strong women helping strong women. So yeah, thanks for having me. It. This was so much fun. I love it. Thanks, Laura. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. The moment of truth. The MPT State of the Union, the family meeting, the emergency press conference is a big deal. I uh, am a little anxious. I'm more excited to share my announcement on the podcast because you're my people. You're my sisters. Love you like it says always. Um, Wow, this is nerve wracking. I don't know. I've made this announcement in different ways like four times now to different people that needed to be told. Um, but to rip the band aid off and not literally because I'm no longer wearing one, I quit my job. 
what? I mean, my mouth is on the floor. What? I quit my job. If you don't know, I have worked on a morning show for six years here in Cleveland. I um, worked at that station for nine years, graduated college. It's all that I have ever known. Um, I did go to school for broadcast journalism. And wow, just the end of an era. You know, I never... I don't know. I've never been one for like the five-year plans because my feelings, my wants, they always change and I want to be able to follow my heart. So I don't like to, you know, pigeonhole myself into something. But, you know, my overall goal has always been, you know, when people say, where do you see yourself in five years? I want to do what I love and be able to support a family from that income, right? And since the pandemic, I started on this social media journey, having literally no idea. I was doing it to pass the time. I was alone. I was bored. I was sad. We all were sad, crying into pints of ice cream during the pandemic, locked up in the house with no one to talk to. And that's when I really started diving into social media just for fun, you know, talking about the things that I found interesting. And, you know, I don't want to say it took off because that sounds like conceited, but it grew into something really beautiful. It grew into a TikTok page, an Instagram page, a podcast. I was approached to do a pop culture podcast, like my dreams coming true. And it might sound so like trivial to you, but really I love this show so much. I love the audience that we have built and I've been doing it now for four years. And my announcement is that I am now at a place to be able to do MPT full time. I'm crying. I'm crying. I never thought it was imaginable. And you guys know I'm not an influencer because I surely don't make enough money off of like you guys buying clothes that I wear because I wear sweatpants every day. I might need to start doing that a little bit more if I need to make some more money. So keep an eye on my LTK page. Um, But yeah, I mean, the opportunities have just been growing. The page has been growing. The podcast has been growing. And I'm so excited to be able to take it to a whole new level. I have some really exciting things planned, not only for the podcast, um, but for the Patreon as well. So I'll just give you the lowdown right now. I'm going to be opening up at least three new Patreon tiers. So right now we do um, Bachelor and Bravo, but I'm going to start a Survivor tier. I'm going to start a general celebrities and pop culture tier. I'm going to have a Love You Like Assist tier where we can get discount codes and newsletters and all fun things. And I just want to say thank you to all of you for making this a reality for, you know, listening to every podcast episode and engaging with me on social media. Truly, I would not be able to take this leap, take this step if it wasn't for you guys. And truly, I feel like we have such a sisterhood. Um, It's hard because I've never quit anything in my life. I mean, even when I was in sixth grade and my mom made me play softball, I wanted to play softball because all of my friends played softball. I was not athletic, so I don't know why I even tried. Um, But I did it and I hated it because I was the catcher. I was like 90 pounds and the catcher's gear weighed 90 pounds. So it's like when I was out there on the field, horrible at softball, by the way, I couldn't tell if sweat was rolling down my face or if it was tears like three times a week. And I still never quit. I stayed from the beginning of the season to the end. I've never even broken up with a boyfriend. I'm always the one getting dumped. So I think just allowing myself to follow my heart, um, take a leap and not I'm concerned about, you know, people pleasing. I, I deal with that a lot but not so much so that it affects decisions that I make for my future. This is really the first time that I, in my adult career life, have put myself first, thought about myself first before thinking about, you know, other people. Um, And it feels good. It feels good. You know, obviously, huge shout out to David. This would not be possible without him. Huge shout out to my mom, who even at 31 years old, I still call my mom crying when I need life advice. And they've just been there for me through the thick and the thin. So like I said, lots of good things coming. I have a week left 
on the morning show. And then starting April 1st, it's MPT full time. And like I said, we have some really exciting things coming on the podcast front, really exciting things coming on the Patreon front. I'll be able to share more details later, but yeah. That's it. Now would be a great time to leave me a review. We're celebrating today, baby. So if you haven't left a review yet, please do so. A little five-star boop boop, a little love you like a sis. Let's celebrate this together because I do. I love you like a sis. And I'll see you next week for another episode of MPT. Bye.